Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach, and I'm here today to talk about the best app that I own for art. And the best app that I own for art costs less than $5, and it is called the No Tan Izer. It sounds like a superhero, and it is in a way. Um, and so I'm going to show you how it works. I use it on an iPad. This is the iPad that I tend to uh, paint from. So here's a paint. Here's what I'm going to work on today, probably a peony. I hope, yeah, I'll keep the glare off. So what the Notionizer does is it will take a photograph from your iPad, so you have to transfer it to the iPad, and it will give you a color picture of it. So that's that. It will also give you a black and white. There's a black and white version. It will also give what's called a Notan. A Notan is what I'm always kind of talking about when I talk about darks and lights. So watch what happens when I press the button and we get a Notan. There we go. See the darks? It, no tan means only blacks and only whites. So this allows me to see the very, very, very darks and the lights, none of the grays. So that gives me a, my, my immediate pattern that I want to follow. Now, what it also does is it has a line here at the very bottom where I can adjust the no, the no tanizer to be where I want it to be. So let's see what happens. Hopefully it will cooperate. Watch. See how if I dial it one way, I can get more darks, and if I go the other way, I get more lights. Now, what I like to do when I have a photograph is manipulate this bottom button until I get forms that I like. And it's right about there that I start to see a form take shape. That round ball of white is going to turn into different shapes that look as if it's a ball. If I go too far down, Let's see what happens. Sometimes it gets finicky. If I go too far down, see how everything is quite balanced there? I've lost the form. It becomes a little bit scattered. And if I go too far up, it blows it out completely. So I can't see it. So this is what it does. So right about there is where I would put my no tanizer. Now there's another button that I can use because this only gives me blacks and whites. And of course we know, um, there's lots of grays in between. It has two other uh, buttons or things to press. It will give you a three level and a four level. I tend to stay in the three level. You see how the gray came in? Left the whites of the paper white and the gray came in. Now I'm not as thrilled with what I chose as my no tan. So I have another button now that I can press and I'm gonna manipulate the gray. Now if I go too far down, oh, it's being finicky. It does that. Let's see. Well, while it's being finicky, I'll explain. Okay, there we go. If I go too far, far down, there. See, almost like I'll dial in until I feel like, oh, that's exactly what I want. Because I can tell it's a round form. Now remember, this is a white form overall. It's a white peony. It's a lot e So if I picked the, like the hardest thing to no tanize, if you know what I mean. Because if it was colored, it, it tends to... Um, you tend to be able to see the patterns easy, more easily. So that gives me the darks that I want and the whites that I want and all the uh, mid-tones. So this is extremely helpful in simplifying forms. So I keep this in front of me. However, I also am constantly going back to the color, the color version, because I need to squint. I always call it squint. I squint as hard as I can, especially for those mid-tones, because what this shows you is it'll show you your darks, your lights, and your mid-tones, but it doesn't show you what's in between your darks, your lights, and your mid-tones, which is important. I want to stay true to this map, but I also know that I'm going to need to um, address every square inch of that paper. For In other words, if I put this in closer, if I leave all those whites as white as they are, the painting will look unfinished. So I'm gonna to need to take care of them. And I manipulate the no tanizer as I go along to figure out how I can manipulate this. At the same time, I'm looking at the, uh, the color version. And at the same time, I'm walking forward and backward from my easel. Cause I'm gonna put this up really, really, really close. When I get really close, which is when you're painting, you're about that close to the form and it gets flatter. So while I'm working, I can't really tell that the form is going to round until I move away from it. So that, that's an example of that happening. So again, this is called the no tanizer and I do use it um, also just to make sure that the photograph that I want to 
work from will work at all. There's some photographs that won't work at all. If I can't even get a notan from it, um, then I'm not going to use it. And let me see if I can find one of those. Um, I tend to, I, I've gotten so good at notanizing in my own head that I tend to not even save photographs that I know aren't going to work. But, oh, I, here's one that probably won't work. But I can keep it as a resource photo. Okay, let's take a look at it. All right, here it is. Let's look at the color version of it. I took some pictures of the dogs outside because I know I want to use them in the backgrounds of paintings. So let me make sure that glare is not happening. So that's a picture of Maggie, one of the hounds. And I like the shape. Now that's not going to work as a painting on its own, of course, but it might work as a, um, as, as a shape in a painting. But now let's look at it as a no-tan. Yeah, that's still holds good, well as a shape, but you can see how that's not going to make a good painting because it's one just one black blob in the middle of a lot of mid-tone stuff. And even if I manipulate this, if I manipulate the, um, the bar, well, let's see. Now, what I'm manipulating here is just the no-tan function, just the black and white function. And I said it was finicky, and it is. Here we go. Now it's going to dial up a bit. Yeah, there I'm going lighter, but even there I am at the very lightest that this photograph is going to give me, the most whites this photograph is going to give me, and it still remains just as a uh, shape. So I know that's not going to work as a painting, but it will work as a shape. And if I go into three, uh, the three color or the three shade version, uh, the same thing's going to happen. Um, I don't need to describe that because what, I'm, what I really wanted to explain, and this is a good example of it, is if you dial into your no tanizer and you can't get a good pattern of shapes for a painting that's balanced and makes sense to your eye as a no tan, especially as a no tan, if you dial it up or dial it down, you can be sure it won't work as a painting. So I know this isn't going to work as an overall painting. It might work as a shape in a painting because there it is with all the whites exposed. There's just not enough not enough information for a whole painting. Oh my goodness. But it's a, but, but that, could, that could work as a shape in a painting. You know, with, uh, in other words, looking through a window and seeing a dog shape in the background. And now I'll dial it all the way down. And I finally lose the form altogether. So this is a really helpful tool, not only, first of all, for deciding whether a photograph will work at all, which is really important, because if you're gonna spend a lot of time, you wanna be pretty sure that you at least have a shot of doing a good painting. Uh, the second thing is you can manipulate where you as a designer want the darks, the lights, and the grays to be. Uh, but it is not, uh, you, you know, there's no tool that's going to um, automatically make you the painter you wanna be. You know, take some time to develop the skills around that and be able to see the darks, the mediums, the lights and make decisions about that. And I, you know, just finished some videos about how to use a limited palette and decide what colors to use. You know, when you think about painting and all this stuff, um, it's immensely complicated when you think about the whole thing, but if you take apart each little thing and then it's not so complicated. I mean, if you concentrate on just color, it's doable. If you concentrate on just composition and darks and lights, then this is a really helpful tool. You know, it, it's when you try to remember all of it at the same time that it becomes a little bit like a, um, a learning to ride a bike at the, f the first time. It just seems overwhelming and, you know, you lose your balance and you fall off. But if you take each skill discreetly and practice at it, you'll find that when you sit down to work, all of a sudden it, it, it just comes together and you realize that you're starting to see, you're starting to see like this app and you're starting to choose colors and you have a mindful reason for choosing the colors that you're using. So again, this is called the no-tanizer. It is a fantastic thing, um, less than $5. <laughs> and it will really help you decide what photographs you should or could use. And it will also allow you to take photographs and be able to see um, the patterns simplified better. And that's the way I prefer to paint. But it is not a substitute for looking at the real color version, you know, looking at a photograph or the color version on the iPad and squinting your eyes because your eyes still pick up more information than, uh, than the machine can. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. And if you have any questions about the no tanizer or anything else, uh, let me know. Please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.